Since my last video about Apple's Reality Pro headset, a lot has happened. We've now had WWDC confirmed and the Easter egg in the invite would suggest we are indeed going to be getting our first glimpse of the headset that's been nearly a decade in the making. So I thought we'd catch up on the latest tidbits, rumours and news and also see what we got right in that last video. Sound good? Hi, I'm David. Every week, you'll find me here bringing you up to date with the latest Apple news and reviews and try my hardest to make tech as easy as possible to understand. I had a few videos lined up on the board for this week, but this one kind of jumped the queue. Do you want to know why? Because we are right on the edge of a once in a lifetime moment. It could well end up being one of those I know where I was when kind of moments when Tim pulls back the curtain on the mixed reality headset. And as we're now only about seven or eight weeks away from WWDC, the news is coming in thick and fast, and that's why I wanted to revisit it with you today. Since that last video, our renders, the ones that Marcus made for me and you here on Talking Tech, they've caused uh, quite a stir. Matt Rumors have used them, Sam Cole and John Foster have used them on their channels. They were on the thumbnail for one of the Genius Bar podcast episodes, and IK Dave has just used them in his latest excellent video, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. And they've been all over Twitter too. And Marcus even appeared on the Mac Rumors podcast as well. Oh, and just a, a tiny casual little flex here, if you don't mind. Dave2D has just featured our renders in his latest video as well. Again, I'll leave a link below. I mean, the poor guy's only got 3.6 million subs, so he clearly needs my help. Go and give him a view. Give him a sub. Not only were those renders top notch in great detail, but I think we really were on something. In that last video, we tried hard to capture the essence of what Reality Pro would be like from unboxing all the way through to the sensation of using it. So today is all about tidying up the stories that have been coming up as the heat rose ahead of the Reality Pro headset launch in June. What really caught my eye over the weekend was the latest Power One newsletter from Mark Gurman. Uh, we might need to come back to that a little bit more later on, but if you believe in Gurman, who's pretty well respected, right? Well. It seems Marcus and I got something pretty spot on with our, a lot of our details in that last video. But as I said, we'll get back to that later. Now, out of interest, did you catch the interview with Tim Cook in GQ a few weeks back? He's clearly passionate about this AR VR platform, and I'm sure privately he knows to some degree his stint at the top in years to come will be measured by the success or failure of this headset. When he said, I'm not going to do the accent, but these are his words, when he said, if you think about the technology itself with augmented reality, just take one side of the AR, VR piece, the idea that you could overlay the physical world with things from the digital world, and you could greatly enhance people's communication. He's clearly really into this platform. Well, he's certainly more into this than he is into Formula One, if that flag waving was anything to go by. If Apple is going to learn anything from Meta, it'll be that they'll need to hit the ground running. The public is still slow in adopting to the idea of an AR, VR feud, and Apple has got to excite and entice. They've got a whole heap of developers at Cupertino for WWDC, and the week where they can get their hands on and use the dev kits is going to be crucial. Apple will be relying on them to get the apps ready for launch for this headset, and Cook is ready to take a battering too. Not only financially, but in that same interview, he said pretty much everything we've ever done, there were loads of skeptics. So he's ready for a rocky road ahead. I would not want to spend a day in that man's shoes. Can you imagine? There are plenty of possible pitfalls for this headset and plenty of folks who are almost right to see it fail. But something tells me eventually this will be special and I'll be telling you why in a bit. Where Apple went wrong with Apple Watch in 2014, they can't afford to this time round. They got totally the wrong end of the stick for the what, predicting it'd be a great way to message people or to use it as a remote control. With Reality Pro, they need to be on point from day one. That is so important and they know it. In that last video I made, we said this faded into the strap of the sling, making it super easy to grab. Keeping the cable concealed not only looks good though, if these headsets start being worn in office environments, then the fewer exposed cables that can be potentially caught on things such as desks, the better. Because it's magnetic, you'll easily be able to grab round and reach for the back of the headset. It'll connect magnetically without you having to look or fumble to connect it. We see it as being a version of MagSafe. And then Gurman agreed with saying Apple's headset will have a new proprietary charging connector. One of the device's more surprising design elements is the use of an external battery that rests on the user's pocket and connects via a cable that inserts magnetically. Where did you hear that first? 
And another thing that Dermot agrees with us on is the displays. Him saying it's likely to use an M2 chip and dual 4K displays. And we said a month ago, the headset will use two Sony 4K micro OLED displays with a pixel density of 30 PPD. Human vision, for reference, is 60 pixels per display. The lenses use a form of pancake optics, which are extremely clear and thin, but require the displays to run very, very bright. Then we move on to the use case scenario. This is where Marcus was bang on the money. We thought this. It could also transform the way we watch live events, such as sports, music, and theater shows, like a, like a Disney show, for instance. Or imagine suddenly being able to be sitting courtside at a match. Additionally, it could be utilized for sports training and immersive exercise. It could even serve as a unified interface for all Apple devices, allowing you to access your phone, Mac, and external screens seamlessly. It could provide a lifelike video call experience, which could be ideal for remote work, corporate meetings, and communication. To ensure that the user feels less isolated while wearing the device, we have incorporated a front-facing display that replicates the user's view to an outside observer. This will give the impression that the user is simply wearing a pair of glasses or goggles. Then at the weekend, German said that there'd be a new portal for watching sports in virtual reality as part of Apple's push into streaming live games and news. He also said that there's going to be an advanced video conferencing and virtual meeting rooms with realistic avatars, ideally, ideally making users feel like they're interacting in the same place, which is again something we said in that last video. This is getting spooky. And Dave2D agreed with both of us in his video saying that there's a real possible future in live sports and AR. If you've ever wondered why Apple has been buying into live sports so much over the past couple of years, I think you and I now have our answer. So, as you notice, change of shirt, it's a totally different day, about three or four days after I shot the video that you're watching. And I had to come into the studio and re-record or record some new bits for this video that could not afford to be left out. Since I recorded that first part of the video, well, basically, this happened. This is a 3D print that we've had done from Marcus's files, and it is exactly the size that we think the headset is gonna be, and it's around about the same weight as well. Now, to give you an idea, that's it up against my iPhone. So you can see it's around about the same size, height as my iPhone, and around about three quarters of the width. It's a, a really nice fit. The lenses just brush your eyes. These lenses inside will be moving with your eyes, of course, to give you the full experience. So it'll be very, very close to your eyes. There'll be the OLED screens in there. But it, this gives us a really good hands-on idea of exactly what the headset is gonna be like. Size, weight, dimensions, all we're missing is the strap. But it's not actually as bulky as I thought it was gonna be. Obviously, we know that the battery pack we think is gonna be waist-mounted now, and there's loads of renders throughout this video to be able to see what we think that's gonna look like. But it's fascinating to get this done. So Marcus got in touch with me this week and said, I haven't seen anybody render, do a 3D print of the renders. So there you go. It is a first on the channel. You are getting a, a very good idea now of exactly what this is gonna look like. I'm gonna shoot a load of pictures of it while I'm here. So again, there'll be pictures shot through the video for you to look at as well. And the other thing that happened this week since I shot the main video is Marcus has made a, a, a video, a, a kind of a, you, you drop the pin, you move it around, it's an AR type of video. I don't quite know how to explain it. It's open source, so I will leave the link to it in the description to this video. You can go and take a look yourself. But it's basically a brilliant way of looking at all the different areas of the headset and bringing it to life. So today we've done, shown you actually in a hard copy what it's really gonna be like. And now I'm gonna run the video that Mark's created and I'll say there will be a link to that as well. You can see all the different points. You just drop on the bullets, move it around, and it comes to life beautifully. So I say, that's something Markson worked on for me and sent that over. So this video really is bringing the headset to life about as much as you could hope for. And uh, I just hope you're enjoying seeing what it's like. We're getting so close to it now. It can't be far away. And the, the way these are gonna be integrated into our life, I just can't wait to see what happens at WWDC. If we were on the right lines of this, and just what the developers make of it and what the public makes of it when they finally get their hands it. Anyway, can you enjoy and watch Marx's video and uh, we'll get back to the rest of the video now. Whenever this headset finally comes out, I'd love to get my hands on it for you and review it for you here on the channel. For that to happen, I need your help. It's sort of in your hands. I need your subs, super thanks, views and shares. If you can do that for me, we may just get to the point where I could get my hands on the headset and tell you what it's really like in my own words here on the channel. Guys, 
help me out. Those subs, views, and comments could make it happen. If you follow the channel, you'll know I try to reply to every single comment. And I'm loving building this community with you, so let's keep pushing. Gurman went into some details about what apps he thinks Apple will ship with the mixed reality headset. Mostly they'll be based on apps from iPadOS, just developed to include some AR, VR elements in them. The apps we can expect to see from day one include all the core basic apps from iPad, such as long list coming, books, cameras, contacts, FaceTime, files, freeform, home, mail, maps, messages, music, notes, reminders, safari, stocks, TV, and weather. The collaborative side of Reality OS is a massive part of the experience. We've already mentioned the video conferencing and virtual meeting advantages that the headset will offer. Well, add on to that, we'll now be able to make free, uh, full use of the free format that was launched last year. It was developed for collaboration. It makes me smile the number of times this happens with Apple. We get lulled into thinking they've sold us a dud or made a mistake, then it all comes out in the wash. The free form app will be perfect for the AR, VR future. That was clearly their game with that. Speaking of games, gaming will be a major focus for the headset and they'll be hoping to track some of the biggest titles out there onto the platform and be part of something from day one. Other new apps include a wellness app that will focus on meditation and a new VR focused fitness plus app that would involve you wearing the headset while working out. Presumably, it could take you into the California and Apple workout studios with the teams. We seem to have more details on how we'll control the headset now, with Gurman saying that it'll be controlled via a connected keyboard and Siri, but more excitingly by hand and eye control too, which again, we predicted in our first video. Welcome to the future, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot to take on right now. It's taken me a few days to get my head into all this, but it's exciting, really exciting, as we're now only weeks away from WWDC. I'd expect more and more details to come out over the next few weeks, I promise you, that Marcus and I will be all over. We'll be keeping our eyes on what's going on and bringing you more content. So don't forget to get that sub done and you can make this channel your one-stop destination for the headset countdown. We'll keep you as up to date as we can. We actually had a couple of really cool ideas this afternoon just before I hit record. So make sure you get that sub done. This could end up being even bigger than iPhone. As I said, Cook firmly believes this to be the beginning of the post iPhone era. Apple will need to listen closely to the feedback though. They'll have a small window of grace to deliver with Reality Pro. There'll be some doubters out there for sure, but I want to grab this new dorm with both hands. No pun intended. Team, I'll be back with you with more content very soon. But why not check out the full original video we made about the headset or what to expect from the next gen AirPod Max. I'll see you over there in a second.